Hi, and welcome to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube channel. My name's Ford from Son of a Stitch, and last week during my Stitch With Me Stitch Along video, there were a few questions that people asked in the comments about something that I mentioned, so I thought I'd make a video to answer those questions this week. So this episode is all about floss chicken. What is it, why do we do it, and how do you win? Here at Caterpillar Cross Stitch, we're all about cross stitch, and we upload helpful and entertaining videos about it every single week. So subscribe to the channel and click that little bell icon so you'll get a notification every time we post a new video. And if you enjoyed this week's video, make sure to leave me a comment and like the video so that I know I should make more content like it. One of the things I really like about the term floss chicken is that the first time somebody used it, I knew exactly what they meant because I think it's something that we've all done at one point or another while stitching. Either it's the end of the skein that you're working from, or you're working from a kit and you're not totally certain that there's going to be enough floss in it, or maybe you just like to make a game of being efficient with your floss as possible. But we've all done the thing where we try to squeeze just a few more stitches than is really sensible out of a piece of floss. So I'm going to teach you some of my favorite tips and tricks for how to win at Floss Chicken. And make sure you watch to the end because the last one is the most effective. Now don't forget to join the Caterpillar Cross Stitch VIP Stitch Club. You'll get 10% off your first order. You'll get a free ebook with eight free digital cross stitch patterns in it. And you'll get a download of our top 10 stitching tips. So make sure that you hit the link down there in the description so you can get all of that stitchy goodness. My first tip for winning at Floss Chicken is not necessarily so much about getting extra stitches out of the floss as it is about making sure that those last few stitches that you get actually look good. I find a lot of people are stitching with the wrong size needle, and most often the mistake that they're making is actually using too small of a needle, because they don't want the needle to stretch out the hole in the fabric. But that's actually a big part of what the needle is supposed to do, is stretch the fabric out a little bit so that the floss can get through. If you find that when you're pulling the needle and the floss gets to the surface of the fabric, you find it's hard to pull through, it's because you're using too small of a needle. Use a slightly larger size and you'll find that it's a lot easier on your fingertips. And you'll also find that there will be less wear and tear on the floss and it won't be so fuzzy and frayed when you get to the end of a strand. My next tip is about squeezing a few more stitches out of that piece of floss. You'll reach a point where the amount of floss that you have left is less than the length that you need to be able to go from the surface of the fabric to the eye of the needle. And so when you hit that point, uh, you'll find that your needle starts getting unthreaded every single time. So when you've gotten to that point, you'll want to have a needle threader like this. Okay, so you'll be able to see that I've reached the point here where as soon as I try to turn my needle around to go back through the fabric, there it goes, it comes unthreaded. So in order to squeeze those last couple stitches out, I'm going to use this little needle threader. Now, if you go to your local craft store, you might see some little needle threaders that have a little metal disc that looks like a coin. Do not buy those. <laughs> they are terrible and will break the very first time you try to use them. So don't do it. These ones, I'll post a link in the comments to where you can find them. These ones actually work pretty well. Now I'm going to show you a way to save some time when you've reached the point where you're re-threading your needle every time. So check this out. So if you're using a stand like I am right now, this also creates a problem because you don't want to have to turn the project over every single time you do a stitch. So what I do in that circumstance is for the stitch where I come back up to the top, I just push the needle through eye first. Then I don't have to re-thread on the bottom. Now if you don't have one of those little needle threaders, or like me, you can't find it half the time, this is a little improvised trick that I'm going to teach you. I've threaded both ends of a piece of scrap floss through my needle as though I were going to do a loop start. And then I can stick my needle in where my stitch is going to be. And I can use that loop to grab the tail of my floss and pull it through the eye of my needle. See that? So then that will allow me to get that back through there. 
Now that's all the stitches that I'm going to do for this piece of floss, so let me show you something else. Now the next trick that I'm going to teach you is something that I learned in an online cross-stitch group. And online cross-stitching communities can be an amazing resource. In particular, I highly recommend that you join the Caterpillar Cross-Stitch Facebook group and follow the Caterpillar Cross-Stitch Instagram channel. Both of those contain thousands of stitchers with a combined hundreds of thousands of years of experience and so there's a lot of resources available there to help you get more out of the hobby so make sure you join those too. Now the tip is a slightly more advanced one and it has to do less with actually making the stitches and a little bit more to do with how hard it becomes to bury your ends when you get to the very tail end of a game of floss chicken. So let me show you this awesome little trick for that. Now this technique is pretty similar to the improvised needle threader that I showed you, and it's remarkably similar to the way you finish off a knot called a sheep shank. So as before, I've threaded both ends of a scrap piece of floss through my needle, so I've effectively got a loop. I'm going to run my needle under the stitches that I would normally use to tuck my tail in, and then I'm going to use my needle to pull my tail through that loop. And I'm going to pull the loop, oh, losing it there. I'm going to pull the loop through. Now I don't want to pull it all the way up against the base of my tail. I want to leave a bit of slack here. Otherwise it will bind up underneath those stitches and my little sheep shank loop will get lost. So I'm just now going to pull those through and I've got a perfectly tucked tail. Now those are my top tips for getting those few extra stitches out of the end of a piece of floss. But when it comes to playing a game of floss chicken, it's kind of like the game of global thermonuclear war in the old movie War Games. What a strange game. The only way to win is not to play. It's a lot of extra work, and unless you really need to save that little bit of extra floss, it's not really worth your time. Just bury the end, start a new piece, and keep going. Don't try to be a hero. Now, if you liked today's video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and again, leave me a comment down below so that I know I should make more videos like it. For Caterpillar Cross Stitch, my name is Ford. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.